This is Cannon County Chamber of Commerce, and today we're talking with uh, Senator Dale Marsh, which is a senator for the Alabama Senate uh, District 12. And today we're going to ask uh, Senator Marsh a few questions, but before we start and get into the questions, Senator Marsh, we'd like to give you just about 30 seconds or so to tell us the voters a little bit about yourself, anything you might want them to know, just a brief bio. Thanks, Keith. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm a local businessman, I've been here since the early 80s. Uh, continue to be a businessman in this area, and, and I have served this area as the state senate for several years and been proud to do so. Thank you. We'll get right into the questions now. The first question is the hot topic of the, of the state, which is infrastructure. With infrastructure challenges facing the state, what are your solutions for infrastructure issues, and how would you fund them? Absolutely. Uh, the Pro Tem's office has been working for almost a year addressing the infrastructure needs of the state. We put a panel together, a lot of discussion, looking at everything that's considered infrastructure from roads and bridges to IT to the ports, down in Mobile. And what we've got to do is put together a plan that is truly going to meet our needs, not just tomorrow, but for years to come. Last time we had a, any kind of a rate increase on infrastructure was in 92. It was a flat number. So we've had no increase in funding for roads since 92, that's 26 years. We've got to ask ourselves as citizens if we're going to make this investment infrastructure, what should it be? And it has to be revenue. We need to look at what other states are doing, how we compare to other states, what we charge on our fuel tax. And, and if that's what the decision is made, then that's what we'll have to do. But it'll be after a lot of discussion to make sure we need, meet the needs of the state and we talk to the people about this issue. Thank you. Our next question deals with opioids. While prescriptions for opioids have fallen nationwide since 2012, Alabama still experiences a high rate of opioid-related prescriptions. In 2016, there were at least 1.2 opioid prescriptions for every individual in the state and an 82% increase in deaths from overdoses between 2006 and 2014. What potential measures do you support that might help mitigate this crisis? You know, we're working closely with law enforcement and the judicial system on this, but including the Attorney General. <clears throat> we're right now in the middle of a lawsuit with some other states uh, to recoup money because of this cost to our state over the opioid epidemic. <clears throat> we're going to continue, as I said, to work with law enforcement. If they come forward with legislation to help uh, solve this problem, we're going to support that. Uh, the governor is one of her priorities is this crisis. So we are we are letting the people who are experts at this determine the way to solve it, and then we're going to support them through legislation if needed. Thank you. Uh, our next topic deals with the budget. Next year, with uh, major budget considerations, what are your priorities, and how would you fund them? Well, education is is always a priority with me. I mean, it affects so many things. So. I was proud last year that we passed the largest education budget since 2008. I believe this year we'll pass the largest education budget in the history of the state. And that's because of what I have believed is good, strong Republican conservative policy of economic expansion and a positive business climate in the state of Alabama. I've worked for that for years. I think it's paying off. And, and it, to that point, as I just said, we have record dollars for education uh, this year because of the uh, excellent economic uh, climate in the state of Alabama. Thank you. Our next question is, with a declining population in this area, what are your views and ideas on how to turn that around? Well, there again, uh, one question is, what is the population? Uh, what's causing these situations? And as a state, we're looking at that because, as you know, the census is coming up in 2020, and we do not want to lose a congressional seat if our population numbers are not correct. But we're going to work, to, as I said earlier, economic development is a key. If we continue to improve the economy in Alabama, it's going to create jobs and opportunity, not just in Huntsville and Birmingham and Mobile, but also other areas like Anson, Oxford, Jacksonville. Uh, so that's our job, just to keep a good business climate and to push for good uh, incentives for business to come here. Uh, we talked about infrastructure earlier. That's a key component for getting people to want to locate in your area. All these things tie together. And, we're working at uh, the local delegation is working hard uh, with the state uh, on the state uh, level to make these things happen. We're going to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you kind of touched on this, but what are your solutions to help provide necessary resources? 
to support Alabama's current and future workforce needs? Yeah, we've done several things, including just last year putting $15 million in scholarships to the post-secondary to attract young people and people looking for occupational change to come into the vocational training field. If we look at the challenges of industry as they're coming in, we see a larger challenge to fill those site vacancies of specialized vocational training. We're talking about diesel mechanics, people who, who deal with computer sciences, these type of things that our post-secondary is equipped to handle. So we just gotta make sure that as we look at K-12 and higher education, we also address the needs of post-secondary because that's where a lot of our citizens would find opportunity when we go forward. Thank you. Um, our last question deals um, with health care and hospitals. What measure would you support to better stabilize hospital finances in order to prevent future closings? Well, now, what we've been doing in the last several years is working to reduce the cost of Medicaid in the state. That's where the, a large part of our problem is. We've passed several pieces of legislation that have actually slowed down the growth of the Medicaid. Right now, we spend over $800 million of the general fund budget on Medicaid. The citizens of, of this state want us to control those costs, and that's what we're going to do. And at the same time, work with the hospitals to help us control those costs and to protect those hospitals in these areas where, where the citizens want to try to maintain those facilities. Uh, so we're doing those things. And as I said earlier, when, you, when you're dealing with education issues, you're dealing with road issues, you want to talk to the people who are involved with those. So that's why we're involved with the, with the medical community, including the hospitals, as we move forward to address Medicaid needs and the hospital needs. Thank you. Uh, now, Senator Marsh, we have just a couple of minutes. If you'd like to reflect on any of the questions that you may have thought of something else that you'd like to add to it, or just anything that you would like for the voters to know. Well, you know, I'm, I'm excited, as I said, to serve this area of, of Calhoun and Talladega in District 12. It's been my privilege to serve. Uh, through my years in the Senate, I've been in the leadership role. I'm the president of the Senate at this time. I think having that position, although it makes me move uh, or go to Montgomery quite often, it also allows this area, I believe, a lot of advantages. Uh, having the connections I have, not only with the governor, but all the different departments of state government because of my position, it, it uh, does well for our area. Uh, I'm able to address issues. I'm able to get people down here to talk to our leaders about concerns they have. And I'm always accessible. I've always been accessible to the people. In fact, I do today like I've always done. I give out my cell number. It's 256-310-2556. If you have an issue, concern, call me. Uh, and I'll get back with you. So, you know, I, I'll, I can tell you as I, I'm a businessman, uh, been uh, in this area for over 20 years, providing jobs. Uh, my family was raised here. Uh, my kids went to the public school system. And I look forward to continuing to serve the people of District 12. And I'm asking for the vote in, uh, in November. Thank you, Senator Marsh. We'd like to thank you for your willingness to serve in the past and, and put yourself out there as a candidate for the future and the sacrifices that come along with that. Thank you.